This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Plan on paying less for the coverage you need with Farm Bureau Health Plans. Get a quote today at fbhp.com. From Booth 7 in Nissan Stadium, Mike Keith, Amy Wells, Coach Dave McGinnis, Rhett Bryant. All four of us together again. Gang's all here. The gang's all here. The band is back together. What a great place to to gather up, too, at Nissan Stadium with this practice. I mean, this is fun. Practice is complete. Let's first start off with talking about the big timer in the room, Amy Wells on NFL Network. Oh, me? Yes. Whoa, yeah. One take. Yeah, that's what I It was one take. Oh, you weren't here when I was By the way, to the OT people, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Yeah. It was taped. It was taped. But one take. it really one was take. one take. And I've one never take. I've never done that for network before. Where I just walked up, said the thing, you and they it. were like, boom, Rhett, that's did, good. Did NFL Network ask you to do something? They did not. Coach Mack, did NFL Network ask you to do something? Well, they said if we can't get Amy, we want you. Okay. <laughs> but the a, answer's really no. That's no. They didn't ask me. So, no, so must be nice. Well, must be uh, nice. I d- I, you're very kind. That's very nice of you. Um, I think well, it's kind of passive aggressive. Right no, right uh, but I think I'm also <laughs> I'm a little bitter. I think I'm also cheap labor, and I recognize that. <laughs> well, <laughs> and uh, you work in, you work in radio for the most part, yeah. so welcome. And I'm I'm here, and I'm happy to do it. And um, was, well, that's, I was very proud that I did it in one take. What do you call it? Get back Saturday. What is back it? Welcome, together. Back together back again. Together and let, let me say this while we're throwing praise around because. The, the three of us, Ashley Farrell, you and myself, were able to hear from up here and also on the field the job that Mike and Mac did, basically being a PA, um, just analysis and a little bit of play-by-play and just engagement. Well, and you're all talking the about during, 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 during the practice. The practice yeah. It was really – in fact, I had a fan tell me. I went across field to do an interview with a player, and a fan said, hey, listen, them doing this at this event – really kind of put it over the top. We felt like we were in, engaged and involved and, and were up well, to date on nice. what they were doing on field, that we understood it. Keep going, Rick. And uh, <laughs> It's very nice. No, right? I mean, no. it's, it's really it's awesome. Nice. It was really yes. nice. So, Mike, whose idea was that, that you guys do that? Brian Callahan. The head yeah. coach of the Tennessee Titans. Brian Callahan. Wow. Um, he said that he liked – you know, and what's cool about Brian Callahan, if you – Many things. Many things. Yeah. <laughs> but – if you've ever worked for an NFL team and they bring in someone from another NFL team, the thing you don't want to hear is what they used to do where they were before. Yes. Well, in Miami, we you know, it's like, okay, whatever. <laughs> in in true, Seattle, true I mean, even in, I'm sure it's that story. way in coaching, uh-huh. too. He's never really – Brian Callahan has never really done that. But he said in Cincinnati, they would have Dan Horde and Dave Lapham do that and I Dan Horde is one of my favorite announcers anywhere and Dave Lapham is so good as his color commentator when he said that they did that he said that's what I I said so you want coach Mac he's like, oh yeah yeah we need coach Mac so that's why we did it was Brian Callahan's idea well it really was good thank you I, I was fully prepared to give you a hard time because I was like man does this guy just want to be part of practice like is that is that kind of what we're doing here now like is this the, the answer standard? no <laughs> Because <laughs> it it's was. air conditioned up here in booth seven. It sure is. Yeah. And it was not down there. Oh. No, but it really was good. I had a bunch of fans tell me that it was great. They really enjoyed it. And it did make practice a little easier to watch because, I mean, we've seen a lot of practices oh, yeah. in our we have. day. We have. And still sometimes I look and I'm like, all right, what are we doing here? What's happening right now? Like, if you don't know, you don't know. And so to be able to explain what's going on, talk about who it is, I mean, just even calling out players players who do a good job, it makes it a lot easier to watch. Well, so that was I, a, I, I hope so. I good hope, idea, Callie. I hope fans like that and didn't think that was annoying. You know, your fear about doing anything like that is that people are going to think, boy, that's annoying. Oh, I don't think – it didn't seem annoying. I got asked to do that at an event one time over 20 years ago before I lived here. And they're like, okay, we want you to do play-by-play of this. And like – 20 minutes into it, they came and said, just stop doing that. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Seriously. I'm sorry, Mike. And it wasn't uh, your uh, suggestion. uh, You were granting a request. I had the same reaction you did. 
It's like, it's, just stop oh doing gosh, that? Yeah, they Please came stop. in. The guy came was in. Was that pretty much it or you're paraphrasing? It was, a, it was a national event Okay. in Neyland Stadium. Yeah. And they said, we'd like for you to be the, the play-by-play announcer and to engage the two color commentators and basically commentate the event. And I'm like, well, I, I can do that. Sure, I'm happy to help. <laughs> 20 minutes into it. I mean, My- 20 minutes. Stop doing that. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that's what you told me to do. Yeah, we were wrong. And they're like. Maybe, but please cease. Oh, they're like, you're terrible. I mean, that was the whole. I mean, they, this guy Aww. didn't even sugarcoat it. He's like, this is this is not good. <laughs> wow. People are people are threatening to go jump off the Gay Street Bridge. I mean, it was. <laughs> wow. It, I mean, it was. It was not good. I drove home, and i would never forget just driving home <laughs> in the dark just thinking. I suck. <laughs> wow. We yeah. all have those times. How did you just not drive into a ditch? Because I mean, I mean that it, hurts. It, it totally that hurts. Gosh. It totally hurts. Look at the look at the look at the hall. So today look, it's better. Yeah, but, but, but look at but I, look at the Hall of Fame rebound but you that, made yeah, but, from being told you were horrible. But I mean, that's when he said this at practice the other day. My first thought is, uh oh, oh boy. <laughs> Do I want to repeat? Because the scars never quite go. But I will admit one thing to our advantage is I know this team, and Coach Mack knows this team a lot better than we did that night in 1996. This was good. (laughs) I would not have told you to stop. And during the pauses, they played Backstreet Boys, which was also nice. Did you hear me ask Coach Mack if that was his playlist? They were. I said yes. I gave it to him right before when I walked in the stadium. Yeah. I said play this. I tell you Backstreet. who who won in all this though is Titans fans. Uh, oh. All the all the families, all the children that came, and just the cascade of calls wanting their favorite player to come over and sign their stuff. I mean, uh, Ashley and I were up here in the booth, and there was a young man during practice. Calvin. Calvin. <laughs> Calvin. Oh, gosh. It, it was a little That's bit of an earworm. I'll, yeah. I'll admit, I hope Calvin found the young man. I hope the young man sure was there did. at the end I'm of sure, practice to be sure able to do that. Did. But there was when they were done and it was time to make their lap around the, the lower bowl on the field, people were just – you could see – just the delight in their faces. It was great. It was very I mean, cool. I, I, I made a lap. I was right there with them making a lap. That I give these fans a lot of credit. They all stayed. Oh, well, Yeah. Sure. I mean, they yeah. stayed. And they're they're hot. Just, yeah. They're, I mean, it's a uh, big shout out to the fans. Well, this is a great opportunity. First time we've had a chance to do this since 2019. You're right. And the the reasons were obviously COVID. COVID. For two years, you, you couldn't have done this. Uh, the Grand Prix. Yes. Going around, the, Grand going Prix. around the stadium. Mm-hmm. Uh, changing out the turf. Yep. Couldn't yes. practice here. So there were. I mean, a lot re- of reasons. A lot of reasons, and it will be interesting to see if it can be done again with where they are in stadium construction. Yeah, yeah it's going to be interesting going forward because as the stadium build progresses, it's uh, you would assume, and I'm not. I mean, I'm not in construction. You're but not. I'm not. Talk him, on a it. lot of people think I am, but I'm not. Um, I would assume that that footprint is going to get wider right. and yeah. the, just the logistics of bringing people down here is going to get more challenging, especially because you try to get as much done as you can before the actual season starts. But, you starts. know, I, I, what you hope from that standpoint is that it can be done based on the fact that people for the next three seasons – will get used to some of the parking changes that they have to make. Right. Yeah, and that that's the number one thing that I get asked about anywhere I go. Right. Where are we going to park? What about parking? How about parking? It's the number one question. Oh. Uh, and the reality yeah. is I think the team is going to continue to come out with more information about what options are. I mean, the team's obviously very aware of it too. So maybe mm-hmm. that that will become – the norm once everybody gets used to it and you can do it. And so yeah. it would be, I mean, it won't, you would think it won't be a problem to open the stadium, but to get people to maneuver around here safely. Yeah. Yeah. And on, that's going to be the biggest On an active thing. construction site, you just don't, you don't know. Let me just say this, Mike and Amy and Rhett, Ashley, this is my third stadium build that I've been involved with. Yeah. And th- this is not unusual. Sure. I mean, it's, it's been the same 
thing every time because your footprint just gets bigger and it gets different. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I, I took away from today is driving up this morning relatively early. I mean, it was 20 minutes after nine and I had to work on some things in here in the booth. But the line of people already waiting to get in. Mm. And, I'm thinking, and I'm thinking, and I'm thinking, you know what? It was crazy. This is not just, it's the beginning of the 25th year of Titans football in this season, but it's the excitement that we all feel. There, there's, it's different. Well, when you think about it and you take it holistically, high schools are practicing. Mm -hmm. yep. They got pads on. Mm -hmm. We're doing some scrimmaging. Yep. Colleges start next week. Your favorite college team practices next week. We're going to put pads on on Tuesday. Yep. And so it's all it's happening here. Yeah. It's all, you know, going on. And, and I mean, it's just so – I mean, everybody is ready for football. But, Mike, I think there's an extra layer to it when you consider everything that has happened to the Titans – um, in the last six, seven months. Seven months. I mean, we're sitting in booth seven, and all of my stuff is still taped yes, up from the is. Jacksonville game. It's all going to have to come down. I was looking at it while you were what, talking. It is all going to have to come down, yeah. yes, because that like, was for another game. All wrong. It was all, well. It's am it's amazing. Is incorrect. Yeah. It's amazing the roster that's on the wall that beat Jacksonville in a game that they had to win and didn't. Yep. Based on how different it is. I mean, 36 new players out of the 91 right now on the roster. It's crazy. I mean, there's so much to learn. Let's talk about, from a football standpoint, just start with you, Coach Mack. A player or players who has gotten off to a good start in the practices? Well, <clears throat> Lloyd Cushenberry. Okay. He has been, he's, he's been so consistent from, from day one, and you've got to have a guy – at the, in the center, you know, as I talked about, I mean, they're, they're the hub of the spoke of the wheel there on the offensive line. But he's been consistent from day one. And you paid him for a reason. But he's displayed that reason. He has been so consistent. You guys know I spent my whole offseason with Bill Callahan in the offensive line. <clears throat> and I was watching him in particular because, you know, J.C. Latham, you want to you watch because he's new and stuff. But I wanted to see really what they paid for. You know when they when they got when they got Cushenberry and he he's been very very impressive to me, and and that's a that's a spot that unless you're really looking, you may gloss over that. But that's a huge huge piece of this new offense. Rhett, I have I'm going to do this in Amy Wells <laughs> fashion. I have, so you have nine. I, I, no, oh, I just wait, have two. Go. I only have two. One obvious and one not so obvious. The obvious one is Jeffrey Simmons. Jeffrey Simmons. Looks like he's ready to s just storm out of the tunnel and, and get after the opposing quarterback right now. He he's You can tell he's healthy. You can tell he's ready. It's just, you know, keeping another foot in front of him in what has already been a nice career. But the other one that's not obvious to, to OTP people is John Ajuku, uh, who has really worked his at rear right end tackle. off. At right tackle on the offensive line, first-year man from Boise State, undrafted last year. And the young man has just worked his rear end off in the off season, and he's right there putting in the reps every day at right tackle. And you can tell he has absorbed everything he can absorb and continues to do so. I've said consistently, based on John Ajuku, I don't know if they're going to be able to get him out of there. Now, we haven't seen Nicholas Petit Frere yet. He's right. still on PUP, but due back soon. But I don't know that John's going to lose that job at right tackle. I, I don't know that that's going to happen. I mean, he's taken virtually every first string snap that I've seen through minicamp and even some of the OTAs where they did have, you know, the first line together. You get a sense that Bill Callahan is going to put that group together, and if they, if they are functioning as a five, he may not mess with it. You know, Bill Callahan's not going to play favorites either. He's going to play dudes that can get the job done. Right. And just extensively watching him, the, what he put those guys through in OTAs for 45 minutes of individual, I mean, as, as, as concentrated and as detailed as I've ever seen. And uh, Ajuku's taking advantage of it. 
I was going to say J.C. Latham, even though Max specifically said not J.C. Latham. <laughs> that's, wait a minute, wait a minute. He specifically what? said not J.C. Well, he said you want to say J.C. Latham, but not. Well, so I saved it for you. That's what you said. I saved it for you. <laughs> I appreciate that. You're welcome. He, has, <laughs> he, in my mind, has gotten off to a really good start because, of course, he's a rookie. He's in a new situation, but he never looks like a rookie. You watch him practice, and sure, he looks like a guy who's learning a system or who's learning a new team. He does not look like a brand new person to the National Football League. I think that's fair. And I think that that's a really big difference. And I think that the amount of work that we've seen him do, I mean, that's why he he looks like he's done this before is because, I mean, he's getting double and triple the reps that everybody else is because he's working out on the field all the time. And so I think all of that is really starting to show and pay off. And so, yeah, I mean, he's making some mistakes here and there or is learning how to do things, but he doesn't look like a young new player. He just looks like a new player. And I think that's a big uh, that's differentiator. A, that's, a, that's a huge point. And, and, and what that is – from the coaching aspect of it, even though he's young, what mm-hmm. you say, he's, he's got mental maturity. Mm-hmm. He's got mental maturity. Ty J. Spears had it when he came in here. Roger McCrary had it when he came in here. And mental maturity in this league is very important because the, the quicker they have that, then the, more, then the more dialed in they can get. They're not distracted. Mm-hmm. And I think that you made a very good point. But the mental maturity has allowed him to be able to do not only – the designated work, but the extra work. Kenneth Murray is mine. That's a good one. Coming out of Oklahoma, people thought he was otherworldly with his athleticism. And then he goes to the Chargers, and he played really well. But he wasn't the difference maker, maybe, that some thought he would be. And it feels like he's found the right system for what he does. Yeah, you're 100% right. And that – that makes a difference. It makes a huge difference. Uh, you know that I know this defensive staff very well. Mm-hmm. I know Frank Bush better than any of them. I've been with him a long time. There was a reason he wanted this guy. I've seen him. I've seen him coach up guys like this. You know, first round picks that that come at, because you know expectations on a first round pick are huge mm-hmm. when they come out. But this system allows them once they understand where to put their eyes. And we're talking about linebackers, where to put their eyes, and they understand that. Then all of a sudden they can go. I think that's what you're seeing, Mike. Well, he's cutting it loose. There you go. And I mean, you can you can see all the athleticism and ooh, ooh, I mean what are you going to do with him when he turns it loose and they haven't been able to do much with him yet and and it's early but oh, it's early but, but you understand I mean it's it's why Jamal Adams is here too uh, absolutely it is I, does Jamal Adams fit with 24 other NFL teams maybe maybe not but in what they want to do it feels like on defense in particular they have gotten some guys who can do it. Well, the, the thing about this defense is, and, and again, I I gave Amy this playbook when I first came in here. It took us five years to put together. Rhett's got it now just to look at it, to see. They've got designated defenses for, for dudes like this, and they'll have specific things that, that he will do. He hasn't missed a step. You saw it when he first when he first got in there. He understands and gets it. The thing that's also, that's also important, too, is – You've got some guys that are, are visually quick trigger guys if you don't overload them with useless information. And that's extremely important. You know, some guys are like a camera shutter. It goes down and it doesn't come up quick enough and all of a sudden stuff's happening around them. If you can take that part of it out of a player, then you've really got a chance to let them play. You, you know, you hear it, everybody, we got to play fast, play fast, play fast. You play fast by knowing what you're looking at and recognizing what you're looking at quickly. And that's what you need to do. And you don't need to have a lot of ifs and buts and candy and nuts about if this happens, do this, if this happens, do that. You need to let them go. And there's a way that you can be disciplined, but you can still let them go. And, I, and that's what you're talking about. Now, Adams, you've got a veteran player there that he is a quick trigger dude you're going to see him in a lot of different spots in this defense it feels like that Denard Wilson will use a lot of players on defense throughout the course of the season many of whom will be based on 
the defense they want to run against certain opponents. You got it. I mean, okay. You, you got it. I mean, this, I've been in this defense for a long time in my career, and the thing about it is the first thing you tell them when you gather them together is with the defense, whoever makes this team and you're in this defensive meeting room, there are no backups in this room. There are no backups in this room. Everybody is expected to prepare and play like a starter because you're all going to get a chance to play. You know, every person that I've talked to on the defensive side of the ball when I've been like, hey, what do you think of Denard's new defense? What's it like? They've all said that they really like it because it gives them a chance to just get after it, just go, kind of open it up and do what you do. And it's not designed with one specific position group in mind. They have all said that everybody gets a shot at it. Everybody gets a chance to make plays. There's not one group that makes the plays and the other guys who are kind of the support, the cleanup guys. Everybody gets gets a chance to kind of let it ride, and everybody really likes that. Big Jeff, I just talked to him about it. Amari Hooker, like everybody has said how much they like it, and that's really exciting to me because I think when guys are having fun – and they can learn what to do, it's easier to go faster, right? No, oh, no, you're 100% right. And I'm glad to hear the players say that because that's the mindset that you've got in this defense, in this defensive – with these defensive coaches. I've just been with them a long time, and that, that's what you said. And as I said, you're, you're, not, you're not preparing – don't sit in this room when we're going over things thinking, I'll just lay back because I'm a backup. And you're expected to play because there's going to be a lot of ways that we can use it, use you. And plus – if everybody can play and gets a chance to, it makes the time you're on the field that much more important. All right, Red, who's a rookie that's grabbed you so far, whether it be a draft pick? You can't say J.C. Latham because she already said that. Well, and Max said you can't. No, but I'll give you one. And this guy, I'm I'm going to start nicknaming him Bleach because he's going to be an irritant to all the receivers that he's <laughs> up against. Wow. He is, he is that kind of dude. Wait, wait a minute. Okay, bleach? That's incredible. Okay, okay. You ever you ever spill bleach on yourself when you're doing your washing your clothes? It, it's irritating. It, it hurts. Yeah. Right. It's irritating. Well, let me say this. He is, and I mean in the good, the most positive way possible. He is going to be an irritant for anybody he's hip to hip with that that are, are running formations and running uh, wide receiver routes, and that's Jarvis Brownlee. He's uh, yeah. He's like, bleach. I mean, he's, he's bleach now. He's I'm bleach telling now. You, well, I mean, think about this. Now, he's a rook. I love it. And he's wearing too. cleats that look like highlighters from Office Depot. Right. You don't do that unless you've got this in your heart, in your oh, soul. Oh, yeah. Because guess yeah. what? Those guys in that locker room, they're going to call you out on Well, him. he's a Miami kid, too. So right? He's, he's going to be a mm. little mm. – you know, when you played high school football in Miami. That is adult football. It's adult. And then, oh, he went yeah. to the U before he went to Louisville, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. yeah I mean, he's he, from that area. The same Florida, with, Florida State. But Florida State, yeah, that's, that's right. But yeah. he's from Miami originally. Yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, he's he certainly fits the type. He is a Chris Harris, Denard Wilson, yes. Steve Jackson guy. And that's what they said about him coming out, is that he, he fits the type that he's going to be super confident and super aggressive. And he has been. And he has the best nickname in all of sports. No, no, I Rhett, don't know Rhett, about that. Rhett, uh, no, it's a great. Look, Red. Go with it. Last him. year. You were on Ty J. Spears from yeah. the jump, from the draft. You got a T-shirt with his picture on it. I sure did. So you were getting need, need, nothing not, unusual about that at all. No, not no, no, no. And wore and wore it to training camp, and to he have his and he loved it. Taken with Ty J. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, you need to put the bleach and get his picture yeah, on it, a I, T-shirt. You know, he just may, like a Clorox. He may not embrace. No, that. he would embrace it if you explain to him what it is. Do you think he's ever used bleach before? No. no, I mean, I mean, he's probably the, never. The kids but, but, don't use bleach these days. Yeah, but to me, because it's an irritant, and you're gonna you're gonna wipe everything out. He'd love it. But that I was I don't know Coach, bleach I, T-shirt. I have a kid a that age. T-shirt. I don't know. Well, it's yeah, just I, really I'm probably white. not gonna run that up the flagpole we'll with him. But. <laughs> <laughs> but the OT people, I'm sure, love it by now. They've probably already started a campaign. Amy started liked the it. T-shirt. I love it. But I just your point. It. Your his point is right. Is irritating. Your point I'm really so is. Or you could just Are nickname we irritating him Amy. right now? Oh, see, that be, that's what I was wow. afraid of. <laughs> that's what I was afraid of. All right, now the show can start. Start. Too easy. Let's ride. Way too easy. All right, yeah. who's yours? Bleach. <laughs> <laughs> you can't call me that nickname. I don't know. Go to Mac. <laughs> you don't have one. Jaquan um, Jackson is sure mine. Sure, I do. Jaquan. 
He's playing well. Yeah, Jaquan Jackson, again, another guy that's mentally strong as a young guy. You can see why he and Ty J are just really close. Hundred like percent. You can just you can you can see it. And Ty J admits, I mean, this is the businessman. This is the grown up in the room when we're together. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just like the way he carries himself. He'll find his way onto this team. I think he does too. He yeah. D- he's just you look at him and you talk to him and you watch him, and you think that's not a six round pick, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you you think this guy's. He's a good player, and he acts like he's about thirty. He well, and, and I mean, he's like he walks the halls like he knows everybody. Says hello to everybody. I mean, he's not the meek and mild rookie. And I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm saying he just acts like he belongs here, and he's going to be here. And for that reason, he plays confident. Yeah, I've been around a lot of rookies in my career, and you can tell some of the ones that are a little bit overwhelmed by it at first. Doesn't mean they're not going to be good players. Right. But at, uh, from the initial jump, it's a little big for him until right. they settle in. He wasn't like that. Well, it goes back to what you were saying a few minutes ago about mental maturity. There it is. He's kind of, what, for lack of a better term, an old soul. Mm-hmm. He's, he's, grown, he's a grown-up guy. Yeah, well, Ty J was like that. Roger McCray yes. was like that. And we've seen what those guys – anyway, that's my guy. A Open one. a Titans checking account with at least $100 and a recurring direct deposit by this Friday, August 2nd, and you could receive two tickets to five home games. Details at titansbanking.com. Titans checking from Pinnacle. Play hard, bank easy. Member FDIC. Nice. Did you get Amy's person? I, that's why I was giving her a little more time. Well, I didn't. I just wanted to make sure that uh, no one else stuck out to me. And as I was, you know, perusing the roster just to double check you know the name that just keeps popping up over and over and over to me is Gabe Judy Lolly that's a good one it uh, just he, he just kind of doesn't go away not in an irritating way in a lovely way but he just <laughs> he's always making plays he's always kind of around everybody kind of hey have you noticed have you seen you know who's really stuck out to me like he just more keeps, Tide Pod not, th- not a little bleach. bit more yeah. yeah a little bit more um agreeable to the the skin um but he's just always been around and you just always see him in the mix he's always in the mix and I think that's a really good place to be as a I think that's right yeah I mean he's in today in practice he's got reps with the second group yes with Cheeto in the mix with Cheeto Awuze out with the calf he's moved up he's moved up and you know he was getting like fifth corner reps Early, it was, you know, it was really a wooze and Sneed with McCrary playing inside. And then Avery would be in there. Yep. And so that was a, you know, and then Garer would get some reps in there too. But then the next guy was always, well, if it wasn't Brownlee, it was Judy Lawley. And well, Brownlee was injured for, for that's a while. True. A that's true. That's true. Strain. But he's taken full advantage. You know, his story is from Charlotte. Goes to Vanderbilt, graduates Vanderbilt in three years. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. Very, very. Yeah. Goes to BYU for a year. Sure. And so then he transfers to Tennessee. And he has a nice year for the Vols. But this system seems to fit his skill set better than any of the three colleges where he played. There are some people who've covered the SEC who are surprised he's doing this well. Yeah. And yet – They'd never seen him be asked to to get up and play this sort of physical. Because most colleges, is it fair to say most colleges don't do this? Yeah, they, they they're they're not as extensive as as this is, and they and they don't they don't put a premium on as much press man as this corner group will do. Mine is Jalen Harrell. Okay. Jalen Harrell, um, seventh-round pick, Michigan. He's shown up a lot. Yep. I I mean, he's kind of all over the place. Uh, You – it's bad. So, I violated my own rule already. I haven't seen him in pads yet. Mm. There it is. Mm. I don't think it's going to matter with a Kenneth Murray because we've seen him in pads before. We've never seen this player in pads. And yet, maybe it's because the Titans need help at outside linebacker. Maybe it's because Harold Landry hasn't practiced yet due to illness. I I don't – 
I don't know what it is that I'm – I feel like I'm giving him too much credit, but I'll say I want to see more. Okay. That's, that's, fine. Right. And that's, that's fine. And that's completely fair. I mean, it's not like you haven't watched a lot of players come through in the well, National Football League. what do I know? But well, I, you do I, know. I, I, you do know. But, I mean, if – there's some things that they do, pads or not – that you say that guy's got a little extra gear to him. I like the way the guy hustles. There you go. That's I like the I way he comes off the edge. Um, he just seems to be around to make stuff happen. And and that's the kind of the common tie defensively that they've gotten with a Kenneth Murray, with a Jamal Adams, with a Sebastian Joseph Day, with Cheeto Awuze, with I mean certainly with Legarius Sneed. They have gone out and gotten all these people who make things happen. I mean, you listen, if you want to hire a linebacker to just go make tackles, you can find 50 of those guys. Yeah. They never they never sack the quarterback. They never bat down a pass. They never force a fumble. They never recover a fumble. Some people in life just make plays. Well, it's not only making a tackle. It's where you make the tackle. Well, that too. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I mean, you can make a tackle six yards downfield, and on the on the game sheet it looks like tackle. Oh, yeah. But if you're making a tackle six, seven yards downfield, you're probably getting your fanny handed well, to, to you. Well, to my point, <laughs> to my point is, I mean, it's not if you're a linebacker in the NFL and you're a starter, you can make ten tackles a game. But what are those 10 tackles? You're, right. talk, you're talking about impact tackles. Impact players. And they, I mean, taking a chance on Jamal Adams, I'm all for, because if Jamal Adams gets back to doing Jamal Adams things, he's incredibly disruptive. Well, you're going to have, you're going to have impact plays in the game. Right. Somewhere. Right. This is a team that had six interceptions last year. That's not enough. No. That's poor. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, the, the this, I mean, they've got to do better. They've got to get more takeaways. They've got to, to be more impactful on defense. And, and it spreads, too. I mean, when you start to get guys, you know, well, causing they, problems, things happen. I, I mean, truthfully, when I walked in here this morning and I saw Danico Autry's name on the roster from last year, it broke my heart all over again. Because he was a guy who did that. He did. He he's he a made, disruptor. He was he made impactful plays, and I wish he would retire and just go be happy. But he's going to play for Houston. <laughs> he was big bleach. Uh, he was irritating. He was big bleach. I don't. I, don't, I love you, man. But Dude, I'm know, riding with it. I don't I'm know all about in. I'm with I'm with Amy. I'm, I'm very w- worried about how that's going to go. I'm over with for Amy. You. Yeah. I'm riding with it yeah. all the way. I love. Let's Rhett, go, like Rhett. A brother. He's worried I'm <laughs> how it's going to go. Over. I, I don't think that I don't think the OT, I just I know some OT people and I'm just not sure they're. Well, I know a lot of them and I but I I know Amy and I'm with Amy on this. She's got she's always got she's a good feel for you things. Up. She, I'm not. She wants to laugh at you. Is no, what it is. I don't. I, I don't like care. It. I, that's I'm, good. That's, I do not tra- care. I'm tracking with the line of thought. I am. I'm all in. All right. So we I have love to, it. We have to wrap up this edition of the OTP. <laughs> I'm sad about by that. me saying, I "Hey, know. Titans fans." See, which, of course, because the official Titans podcast, it makes sense. I would say, hey, Titans fans. It'd be mm-hmm. weird if you were like, hey, Steelers fans. Hey, Steelers fans. <laughs> that, would be a bit of be a, that would be a bit of an upset. A little, little curveball there. Yeah. Uh-huh. Hey, Titans fans. <laughs> Seat Geek makes it easy to find tickets so you can be part of so you can be part of the touchdown celebrations. This is new, by the way, Amy. Oh, is it? Yes. Oh. Seat Geek makes it easy to find tickets so you can be part of of all of the touchdown celebrations, whether you're buying or selling tickets, wait a minute. So whether you're buying or selling football tickets, it's not what I want to say. No, Seat Geek is the place to do it. Seat Geek is the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. The most disruptive idea in ticketing: a ticket that works. Expect the expected. Seat Geek. Seat Geek. That's yes. I just want to be involved, That's, and that has an exclamation exclamation it, point. It does, and you didn't feel like I. Hit you didn't it punch it enough. enough. All right, I'll hit it. So let's talk about the next week. Titans, um, a Sunday off, a light practice Monday, and then on to the pads. There we go. Woo! How does the design of practice, outside of the obvious, but from the coaching staff standpoint, how does the design of practice change with? the addition of pads. Well, first of all, you, you ramp up. You, they're practicing fast. Oh, sure. But you ramp up the speed and, and, you, and you go full thud. 
they're taking nobody to the ground, but now it's full thud. So what it has to happen is anytime, anytime now you're making a break, anytime you're an offensive or defensive player going to engage with a player on the other side, you've got to have your base to you because it's going to be full thud. And, and full thud is a lot different than going up and just putting your hands on somebody or just making drive-bys and saying, you know, I would, I would have gotten them. So full thud, when full thud comes with the pads on, it's a different mindset as far as, as, as setting your, your, your angles when you're getting ready to engage somebody. So what that means is the collision is happening, but people aren't – Going down to the ground, That's what but full you're thud smacking is. into each That's other. Full, full thud. Well, is, full is, contact. I, I guess part of the design question I'm asking is: guys are going to be sore. Oh yeah, no, no. It, and it, so, it, how it, does that change? It changes. Okay. It changes, and 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 and, and of course, all the the uh, numbers and the dynamics that they have now that they 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 track, and I mean, but it, there's just no way to avoid body soreness once you start to hit people. There's just no way to avoid it. That's just part of life. And so the thing that the players that are, are cognizant of this know, they already have their they already have their, their their ice bath routine ready. They already have their stem ready. They already have everything to be able to alleviate that soreness as quickly as possible, but you don't ever get away from it. Who was it that had all the Epsom salts? Who was that? Do you remember? I don't. Was it DeMarco Murray? Maybe. Sounds right. That had like lots of Epsom Sounds salt. Sounds right. Yeah. Like a ton. Well, the, everybody's okay. got their own. It's got, that time of year. Well, you find what works for you. You yeah. find what works for you and, and, some, and some that don't. Colleges are so sophisticated now. Mm-hmm. I yeah. mean, they've all had some training within this but the, the, it, it you will see now the way you take care of your bodies after practice and even before practice once pads come on it's another time frame you've got to insert into your routine well this is good to be back in booth seven it feels really good to be back yes like really two weeks really good two weeks we will be back here ready to roll august Woo-hoo. 10 August 6 10. p.m., Titans Radio on the air at 5 Central. That's correct. San Francisco 49ers, come on to town. That's a, that's a Will nice Brandon Ayuk be playing that weekend? That's a great question. Not for the 49ers. Yeah. <laughs> Trent Williams? Ooh. Not for the 49ers. No. Mm. Trent probably just wants to get out of the trip. Quarterbacks get paid first. Yes. And they're all getting paid around the league. You're seeing it. Well, you have to pay them. You have to pay him. I mean, you just don't have any choice. You have to if, pay him. And, and if, if you if, even remotely think you have a guy, you have to pay him. And if you yeah. don't have $50 million, you're not going to get him. Nope. Nope. That's what they're making now. That's just life in the National Football League. Mm-hmm. But it's a, it's a really good opponent to open up with. It is because they're, they're challenging, both scheme-wise, offensively and defensively. They're, they're, that's, that's a challenge. That, and they're well coached. Very well coached. They do a good job. Yep. For Rhett Bryan. Coach Dave McGinnis, Amy Wells, Ashley Farrell running the show. Thank you so much. I'm Mike Keith, and we appreciate you joining us for another edition of the OTP.